or 331 here today. Today's video, we're going to be, I'm going to be talking about, uh, it's, this is like a combination of, of two video, two types of videos I've done. The custom class, my custom classes for Nerf, and the how to become classes. I'm going to combine literally these two ideas into one idea and see how, how well it works. And I was trying to think of a, well, come to think of it now, there's not really a sniper class for Nerf. There, there's no really such a real sniper class for Nerf. But the first thing that came to mind was Airsoft and how they have snipers. Why can't Nerf have snipers too? And so I'm think, I was thinking of uh, long distance and firepower, such as, oh, and actually on top of that. And it's nothing like a range master from Busby or a predator from Busby. Or, or even a long shot for that matter. A long shot has tremendous power, but compared to a crossbow from uh, next generation, it's mm, by much not, the long shot doesn't do very well. So um, I'm going to do it in reverse order, which is kind of strange, but I'm actually quite tired from a lot of the practice I went to. But I'll go over the sidearms, such as the Retaliator from Nerf. Nerf Retaliator with a Raider stock. This is painted black, but I got it from a friend of mine. That's the reason why it's painted black. Uh, mainly because I, like, even with a six dart, oh, and a six dart, but the reason why, I, the reason why I went with a Retaliator with a six dart clip, maybe two or three six dart clips, and a Raider stock, is because the Raider stock is adjustable. Where it was, you had a Retaliator stock, it's not adjustable. And if you're if you're a tiny if you're a tiny guy, you can have the, the small stock. If you're a big guy like me, have the stock all the way out. And seeing seeing that the retaliator has some pretty good ranges, and it in retrospect it's kind of like bolt action, even though it's not a bolt action. I'm gonna make that clear. It's not a bolt action. It's you, it's a, a spring loaded gun, but. Like I said, if you think of it differently, you pull the slide back, you pull the bolt back, push it forward, push the bolt forward, lock it into place, pull the trigger, pull the trigger. Same idea, sort of. So the sidearm would have you know, two or three six star clips, maybe a 12 dart clip just for the heck of it, a holster to hold it in place, and a belt, you know, so just so you have the capability to have more secure, secure, I don't, I don't want to say security, se secureness of the gun being in the holster and not going to fall out or flip, up, fly, flip upside down like this. Nerf holster, by the way, is one of the accessories. And for your long range uh, sniper rifle, it's not really a sniper rifle, it's a crossbow. Next generation crossbow because when, when you look at the next generation crossbow, let's scope off. It's kind of hard to see, but this scope is is very basic. It has these four, uh, it looks like four like sticks coming out. It looks like a little target or a little uh, sight, more or less. It doesn't work very well because it doesn't improve anything. It just makes you think, oh, where's the target going to be? Oh, aim for the head, whatever. But um, the, like when you uh, leave the gun unmodified, it is not as good because it shoots those really thick darts that look like they're made out of sponge. Like, you know, a sponge you use for, like, washing dishes. But if you modify it by simply either putting a lot of tape around it or securing the dart more firmly into the into the place holder right here, pull the trigger, it shoots a little bit further than the leak gun. Maybe, well, maybe a little bit further than the leak gun. And this is my personal opinion. I could be wrong. Then again, this is my personal opinion, so I don't really care what other people think. But if they have different ideas that might help influence me to do a better sniper class in the future, go ahead. Just don't hate. I love haters gonna hate. Uh, the other thing I was gonna mention is you don't necessarily need a bolt action rifle from Nerf or Busby to just have a sniper class. You can you simply can think outside the box, just go like, oh, any long range type of gun that's not like a, a rocket launcher that shoots those big ass missiles. Such, for example, the Titan. The Titans, 
not really a good candidate for the sniper class. It's more like a demolition class that I would I might do in the future. Um, the crossbow. Well, the reason why I bring up the crossbow is that it's more it's more like a stealth weapon. It doesn't make much noise. Okay, it, make, it makes some noise. I should say <laughs> it makes some noise, but then again, the shoots start extremely far. I mean, I could shoot a boomco dart, which is a lot lighter than a nerf dart. And it shoots, I, if I shot it from here to over there, which is about a good 40, 50 feet, it, it could go further than that. It would hit the wall and bounce right back with a, with a lot of, uh, like, knockback and such. Uh, I would personally use elite darts in this because they are, they're, unlike Velcro tip darts or Whistler darts, they don't have a uh, blockage, like, they don't have a thicker tip. The elites and streamlines, mostly I would recommend leak darts, but if you only have streamlines, they work fine as well. Streamlines and the leak darts work as, like, they work much better than the uh, uh, whistler darts and the suction darts and so forth. And on top of that, I forgot to mention part part of what reason why I was busy for the past few months, or how, however long it's been since, uh, no, past month, my bad. Past months since the Nerf War, I've been working on making my own air gun. Not using air, like from my mouth, but using like an electric pump or some sort of uh, bicycle pump to pump it up into a, a, a soda bottle attached to PVC with a, a, hose, a hose valve or a ball valve or something, from also from PVC, to shoot a dart extremely far. I'm still working on like how big the bladder should be for the air and what kind of pump I should use. Should I use like a, a bigger version of a, of a Air Zone Panther pump or should I use you know just plain electrical pump and just stay in one spot. But if you're like I said before like I was trying to say before if you have any like air blasters that shoot really really far like a range master as long as you don't damage the air tank or, or whatever a range master from Busby works fine. Modified works even better. Put some PVC in it, it works even much, it works a lot more better, I think. I think uh, the last one, last one I said was PVC, but whatever. So, uh, like I said, crossbow from next generation, 30 bucks from Toys R Us. You just modify it by just putting a, like, a couple of layers of duct tape around the scope. And if you don't know what the scope is, I can take it off. It's this black piece I mentioned before with the little four sticks, uh, like in the, uh, the, the inside part of the circle. Just put like a lot of duct tape like at the other end of the scope where the scope is, uh, where the crossbow part is. And uh, you should have a tight fit, uh, depending on how many layers you put on, you might either have a really tight fit, uh, a semi-tight fit, or just a somewhat loose fit. And then, last but not least, um, like I said before, the air gun. If you have, a, if you're making a homemade air gun, uh, a few things you should mention. A few things I should mention is you you need to look at two principal things: how you're gonna fill it up and how you're gonna release that air. Because I realized this, my dad told me this a few days back with the ball valves. The ball valves only release; um, they can release all the air, but if you just turn just the slightest amount and leak like, let open just a little bit, all that air is going to rush out before you can turn the valve all the way out, all the way open. And then, so I'm trying to figure out, should I use an electronic trigger, should I use, uh, or make an electronic trigger, my bad, or do something else. And I hope you guys can hear me from this video, I haven't really tested the audio from this. But, um, yeah. So, like, so if you don't have the, if you don't have the, if you don't have the knowledge or or just don't have the parts or don't have whatever to make the air gun, just go with the next generation crossbow modified. Or I think even unmodified, you can just slip the dart in and just hope for the best. Hopefully you can get it angled or leveled. If you put it down, like if you're on a ledge and they're and you're shooting downward, the dart's gonna fall out easily if you don't modify it. And for, like I said, for a sidearm, I'd recommend a retaliator, uh, Nerf Elite Retaliator, with three or two six dart clips, or two no, three six dart clips and and or two six two six dart clips and one twelve dart clip. 
either one works. Just to give you options. And then a Raider stock, because it can, you can adjust it to your liking. It's, it looks like one, two, yeah, three, three levels of your adjustment. Oh, and don't mind these yellow tags. These are from the Nerf War in Conklin. I forgot to take off. So, still gotta take them off. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, uh, or me trying to make a how to become uh, my custom classes for Nerf Sniper. Or, I can't think of a title, but uh, my, my, uh, I don't know. I'm like, I'll think of the title later on. But, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys understand the video. This is uh, Nerf Gun Reviewer signing off for today. And I'll see you guys later.